look at this guy right here. This is my new bed plate for my VZ330. It doesn't look like metal. It almost sounds like metal, but it is not metal. This one is made out of graphite and this is a new technology for our printer. And I'm always excited to test new stuff. This is supposed to be good. Let's find out if it's actually good. Let's compare it to a normal print bed, aluminum print bed, mixes that we have on my VZ330 and see if it's actually better. It's supposed to be better in thermal expansion. Let's find out. Yeah, new bed plate, new material, graphite, new technology. Always exciting to see uh, new innovations. This one is made from a company called N2O Factory. There's currently a Kickstarter about this, so if you are interested in backing up this project, I'll put a link down in the description. Uh, if you're interested in buying one or get one pre-order, this is going to be where you get it. Made of graphite, um, super hard to machine, super hard to process. So it's a little more pricey than your normal aluminum bed plate, but it's supposed to be more thermal or thermally stable compared to aluminum. So it will deform less with heat. It will stay and keep its shape. And that's what we want when we print with a high temp material. I print a lot of ASA, ABS, nylon, and so on. So I heat my bed plate a lot. And this is supposed to stay um, or be more stable under heat. So we will find out um, if that is true and if it's worth it. Retail price on this 330 by 330. It's gonna be around 180, 190 from the Kickstarter page. 235 size is gonna be around 140 bucks. I think it's a fair price. If it's really going to be more uh, stable than aluminum, mix six aluminum uh, or cast aluminum, then I, I, I'm totally down to pay a bit more to get more quality and get something that is stable and performs good. So let's stick a silicon heater, a magnet and a PEI sheet and check how this guy performs. This is supposed to be ultra flat, super well machine uh, from what I see. Um, but I mean, once we put a magnet and a PI sheet, I mean, the tolerances on it, as good as it gets, um, you're always going to be down to the tolerance of the magnet and your PI sheet. So at this point, we're just going to test it and see how much deformation we get out of it and how good it is compared to my mix six, uh, bell plate. So let's do that. Let's install it and see how it does. So yeah, first test I wanted to do with that bed plate. Before even sticking a silicon heater and a magnet and PEI sheet on top of it, I brought it to the office, put it on a granite block. This granite block is super flat, it's been tested, and it was super good as it is. I tested in every direction and I was not disappointed. This thing was flat as it is. Then it was time to install the silicon heater under that uh, graphite bed plate. And to my surprise, it sticks very, very well to this surface. If you clean it first with isopropyl alcohol to remove any grease and every residue there, it's gonna stick very, very good. Um, I didn't even bother installing a, a RTV gasket around the bed plate. Um, don't take it as an advice if you wanna do it fine. On my side, I've never really had to do it. I found that it always sticks super good to a point where even if I want to manually peel off um, the silicon heater on my bed. It's a real struggle. It's really, really hard to peel. I've never had a falling bed in my entire life. Um, plus on both of my printer, there's a frame plus silicon spacers plus other stuff that holds the belt against the bed plate um, and it can't go anywhere. It can't fall. So installing a 100C thermal fuse and connectors and it was ready to go, ready to go on with um, the other test, this was super simple. Uh, since we have a beacon scanner on the printer already, I thought I would use that as a surface scanner and see. So heating the bed at 100 degrees Celsius for 90 minutes and taking a bed measurement at every five minute interval. And the result were quite uh, impressive in my opinion. We all know we have to heat soak the printer, but this test convinced me even more that we have to do it, uh, especially with an aluminum bed plate. 
Not so much with a graphite bed plate, but um, you still have other um, components inside the printer, like the rails, like uh, the frame itself, everything will, will react to heat. So my advice here is still, you need to heat soak the printer, but it's way more stable with the gra graphite bed. So as you can see here, let's take a look at the result real quick. All right, so uh, for the result, this is the aluminum bed plate when it is cold and as you can see here we're interested in that column where we see the range so the range is the, the difference between the lowest point and the highest point detected by the scanner it started at about 0.23 millimeter that was cold and it was uh, cranking up as you can see here after um, all the way to 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, it started to stabilize a bit, as you can see here, and we can load those uh, bend mesh. And um, it was stable all the way up to um, about 90 minutes. It was still uh, being affected, but it really started stabilizing, as you can see, after 20 minutes. Um, compare that to the graphite bed plate, which is this guy. This is the reading, like look at this. This is the reading cold. Um, we are ultra flat, so it was pretty well machined, uh, 0 0.05 millimeter. But the most important thing is look at the result as we go on in time. This is about after hot bed, after 20 minutes, we're still at 0. 044 and looking at the result all the way up to hotbed 90 minutes it was still not moving it was still super ultra flat as you can see um, not a lot of movement it was I mean I was super impressed I'm still super impressed and super happy with that heat bed um, those results were speaking by themselves so yeah after 20 minutes uh, this would be my normal recommendation for heat soaking if you print with high temp material that needs a really high temp bed like 100 degrees celsius then i hooked up my uh, thermal camera i wanted to see how this bed plate would react how uniform the heating would be on this bed plate and as you can see here it's it's actually pretty good um, i don't find any any downside to this bed so far um, i'm also putting here up there the properties uh, of the bed if you want to take a look at it it's also in the link in the description if you want to know all the specification so yeah with the thermal camera nothing there to say pretty good so after knowing that the bed mesh were very different from one bed to another, I wanted to perform another one last test, which is using a proper dial gauge and measure with a dial gauge mounted on the X-Rail. And for this test, I kept, the, I kept the enclosure open. So that way the heat would not affect the rail as much we just wanted to see how the bed would react, so I opened up the enclosure, run the test, heated the bed for 10 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius, and see and compare both beds to see how they would uh, be different. And again, um, the graphite bed was, was super stable uh, compared to the aluminum bed, all the way to a point where I was doubting my gauge was working or installed properly, I had to tap it uh, on it to see if it was still uh, working properly. It was so that bed didn't flinch at all with heat it stayed the same which is quite pretty impressive um, while the aluminum bed was um, deflecting for about uh, let's see about 0 0.1 millimeter total uh, that might not seem much but 0 0.1 is enough to cause kind of a, a artifacts on your z layer height um, so you have to really to heat soak with an aluminum bed so what is my final take on this bed plate? Well, I will give it two thumbs up. I'm, I'm super happy to have it on my VZ330. It's an awesome performer as we saw in the test. Ultra stable, ultra flat. They made a really good job. Uh, unfortunately, this video came out Sadly, after the Kickstarter, uh, I wanted to do it before the Kickstarter ends, but I just, I didn't have time. Sadly, the Kickstarter didn't made it, uh, sorry, didn't make it. Um, but after talking to the company, uh, those guys are not abandoning. They are still in production and it's going to be available soon. There are uh, VZ uh, VZ butt beds, Voron beds that's going to be available. Uh, maybe more printers in the future, we don't know. So it's going to be available soon. I'll put a link in their website, of their website, directly in the description if you want to take a look at it. 
Fair price, I think 180 something for a VZ330, 140 something for a 235. Um, I hope those prices will be still uh, in that range when it comes to uh, the final sales. But you guys decide if it's worth it or not. On my side, I think it's totally worth it. Um, I'm always looking to get the best parts, the best uh, component as possible. So for me, it's a no-brainer. This is uh, better than the aluminum. It doesn't mean that the aluminum bed plate is not good. We've been making awesome, great prints with it. Just got to be more careful, heat soak it and so on, um, but still is a good option. This one is a better option, but yeah, it's, uh, it's all a matter of your budget. Obviously, if you decide to upgrade, I highly recommend it. For me, it's just going to be uh, not a super high game changer, but it's going to, you know, make it a little bit better than it was. And that's all I, I, I'm looking for in terms of 3D printing. So anyway. Thanks for watching. I hope you're all excited as I am with this product. Um, figure out on your side if you want to upgrade or not. It's up to you. But again, two thumbs up and thanks you. Uh, thank you guys for providing me this bed for free to test it. I'm super happy with it. Um, and that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great evening and see you on the next one. Take care.